Hey, what's happening everyone? Today we're gonna do a walkthrough of uh, this property right now that one of my clients is purchasing and uh, I just wanna share it with all of you guys because I feel like there's so much information uh, that this uh, uh, you know, superintendent is gonna go over with us and I wanted to share it with you guys so you can see uh, you know, everything that is inside the walls of your house uh, and uh, the way they build their houses over here in this community. And let's get into it. Welcome home. Six. This is your exterior elevation, currently be dried in with the uh, lath and the uh, light roofing material. Getting ready to set more roof tiles on your lower garage. Getting uh, inspections in the next day or two on the electrical and mechanical plumbing. Uh, the section of lath that is different color over on this side is where your stone is going to be for the 3D elevation. Right here. Uh, it's a heavier metal with more uh, nails to hold the stone up. The rest of it is just soft backing for the regular uh, stucco. Um, we got light fixture that's above the entry right over here. Uh, another light fixture on the side of the garage with the address light right above it. Right there, abouts. Pretty much the best shot of the house right now is the front because the side's full of scaffold. We do have the utility side of the house that has some uh, electrical, gas, a little voltage. Uh, this is the side your air conditioning units will be on um, and a blank wall in the back. I got be over there. Exactly. The other side of the house will be the wall to the back of the home with the gate on the opposite side of the air conditioning units. Okay. There is a low voltage transformer uh, that works up here with the uh, photo cell to turn the lights in the front off when the sun comes up and on when the sun goes down. Besides that, it's your normal fixtures for gas and water table down the sides. Two AC units where the silver lines are sticking out, the orange lines you can see. Another couple of days when we pass inspection, we'll be able to brown coat the house so it'll look like the house across the street by the middle to end of the week. If all goes well and the wind stays down, that's brown coated. And then on the inside of the house, within a day or two, hopefully we will be insulating. You can look at the plugs in your garage, all the extra lumber that goes in to hold up the beams that are on the ceiling. Uh, all good for the environment. Uh, low, uh, excuse me, the uh, Radiant barrier, aluminum foil on the roof sheeting to keep the heat and block it back out of the atmosphere. You see some more huge beams in the middle of the garage. Huge steel brackets that hold up the beams, steel straps. A lot of don't usually get to see that in your house, all the lumber that it takes for your uh, ceiling to be put in. There's a garage door opener power, as well as one light in the garage. On the outside, the you have a main water shut off. Plug on one side wall, plug on the back wall, and there is a plug on the right wall with the water softener loop. So whether or not you bought a loop from us, we do still give you the softener loop. Whether or not you bought the softener or filter from us, with a drain and a plug to plug in. This is your water heater stand where your water heater will go with a metal pipe in front of it so you can't hit it with your car. Pretty much standard inside the garage. When you see the shear walls like this, these are weight load bearing walls bringing extra strength down. You'll notice uh, on those walls, you'll see heavy steel hold downs to hold down the uh, house in earthquakes, one on each side of the wall. Extra bolts to bolt the house down to the concrete. Concrete seven and a half inches thick, 4,500 pound PSI concrete with steel cables running every two feet from the front to the back and from the side to the side. Okay. So the light switch will come in and the door button for the garage door when you come in. The reason you bought the house is the monster kitchen. So we're standing in the kitchen looking at the living room and the dining room. On the wall over here, we have your range marked off on the floor for center line and your range here, which gas. Your microwave will vent when you burn the chicken wings right out through here with its own power. Power across the top of the countertops. And at the end of the countertop, we always give you a telephone or a CAT6. So if you want to do high speed uh, internet or telephone or fax machine, you can do it there. Simple pantry. Big size inside of here, has its own air conditioning and its own light. Got a couple more big huge posts and hold downs in the back in the dining room. In your dining room you had the standard two fixtures under the lights. This house was also spec'd out with an additional light in the middle. So if you want to hang a chandelier, this is a separate switch to hang a chandelier over your dining room table. Your island is on this side, so you have your sink basically centered right here with the dishwasher on the left side of it. It does have three, uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six lights that are above the kitchen that are standard. Yeah, if you just look above the 
the dining room, there's more huge beams and steel straps holding that whole door together going into the dining room. More steel straps and solid beams cutting across the kitchen to the great room also. There's also why the house is so great. You got a big open great room with the optional 12-0 slider instead of the eight-foot door. So you have the bigger door over here, which will have a lattice patio cover over the top of it. And at the end of the room, you do have a plasma pre-plug, so you're able to drop your HDMI cable down the wall, bolt your TV up and plug it in, and then plug everything else in down below. There's RG6 as well as CAT6, so you can run satellite TV, cable TV, whatever, whatever the future holds will run through those lines. All of the windows look like they're shaded and tinted, but they're actually really windows. They are vinyl frame windows, so the vinyl doesn't get hot like metal and come inside. The low is actually a tint that blocks the heat out, so although it's 90 degrees outside today, it's probably only about 70 in here. You see the difference in color right here? That's what it means. Most of your windows are 3050 single hungs, hung meaning they slide up and down on springs rather than opening side to side like they're sliding doors. Mm -hmm. Four extra lights in here, black one there, black one there, blue one there, and black one there, with respect to the house as well. So we have a light up here in the great room. You're going to have the big open feel when you come into the hallway. You have a, a, a timeout room, I like to call it, or the storage room under the stairs. It does have its own light and it has its own switch. It goes kind of down and around the corner. Come in your entry right outside, it'll be the stone on the right side with your ring doorbell. And there's also a plug outside and one light in the ceiling. When you come into the door, there's a light in the ceiling here. Brings you to your big open field right here where you have the rail option that was attached to the downstairs. So there's no pony walls on the first and second flight of the stairs that are created in the rail. And then standard pony walls around this on the top. So you said whenever we have a wall right here with uh with this kind of uh, finish right there, plywood, plywood is a, is that a means it's a little more. So okay. the, the middle of the, the, the wall over there, this whole section here, which is actually a two by six wall to carry everything from up above and on that end. Another one down here off the side of the front door. So if it doesn't have one, that means it's not load bearing. It is load bearing. It'll still have a double top plate and it's load bearing, but it's not a specific point where they're bringing it down in master amounts of weight that have the extra pull down to keep it As you can see, all the, steel, all the steel brackets that are holding down in these special corners. Right. And then all the extra lumber. All of our windows are recessed, so you get extra lumber on the windows to bring it into the 2x4 into the or into the new sitting outside, which also makes them less hot. Gets them more shade. You can see, I mean, obviously, normally 16 inches apart, you got 10 inches, three, an extra stud here, an extra stud here, two here, two here. A lot more than what you would normally need on 60 inch on center stuff. So even this little small room has a very barrier. Right. Each room's going to have a ceiling fan pre wire, so you'll have one switch that will work out an amp uh, uh, on the plug, and the other double bubble switch will work a ceiling fan pre wire in each room. Each bedroom and great room. Then the downstairs uh, bedroom has a little bath, so it's a tub shower combo. plumbing in them so that the plumbing doesn't blow the walls out. That makes sense. And another shear wall behind you. And that in a nutshell is the downstairs. The options we looked at are the rail here, the uh, patio door that is bigger, the patio that will be over that, the four lights in the great room, the plasma pre-plum on the wall, as well as an extra J box in the dining room or a light. You're going to have the standard white paint as well as the standard knockdown texture on the house. All of which I've written on the windows so that everybody knows. As you come up the stairs, you'll have all handrail for the first and second flight, standard walls at the top of the stairs, going around the loft. As you come up the stairs, you'll have a row of lights and a smoke detector by your master bedroom. You do have an extra J box that will stack right here in the middle of the stairs. You'll like the model. You can be able to hang your own chandelier down here. It's a single wire on its own switch. 
So all the regular lights are blue and black. That metal box is the optional light at the top of the stairs. Small hall linen at the end of the hallway. And these are four by 12 sheets of plywood. So that's how wide your loft is. <laughs> four, eight, 12, 12 by 12 fitting in here very easily. You have another plasma pre-plumb on the outside wall so you can bolt your TV, plug it in, put your HDMI cable down, RG6 and CAT6 for your TV here, and everything can plug in on the bottom. Standard plugs around the rest of the room. Four lights in the ceiling were added also. Blue box, blue box, blue box, blue box, and the standard ceiling fan pre-wire, all under the radiant barrier again to keep that heat blocking out the house before it ever gets hot. We're going through right now with the orange paint, the blue paint, the pink paint. It's all part of our uh, process control, quality control. Um, fix wall, add nails, shim. Um, they're shimming and shaving, so they're shaving off some of the spots that stick out. And then they'll add cardboard on other spots where they stick in a little bit to try to keep the wall as straight as possible before we put the deck wall. In your laundry room. over each one of your rooms, either over the doors or as vents in the ceilings for uh, continuous circulation around the house. In the laundry room, there's a fan that's actually got a switch behind the door because they want you to leave it on as much as possible to circulate air. You've got a main structural panel behind the door in the laundry room for all of your RG6, Cat6, cable TV, satellite, whatever you're going to use goes into here to distribute to your master bedroom, your loft, and your great room, and your kitchen. Wash machine will be in a pan over here. Hot and cold water drain, half the pl uh, plug for your washer, half the plug for your gas dryer. Remember, you need a gas dryer if you didn't get one from us. Also here, they use two by sixes so that you could exactly. do that, right? Once again, the rear wall needs to have the extra room for the plumbing, so it's all two by six walls here. And this is where the laundry sink option goes. Hot and cold water for the sink and an extra plug on the side. So as far as this panel right here, this is where, you know, all the... Uh, you know, the cable guy is going to come in to install, you know, let's say high speed internet and all that stuff, right? Exactly. It comes from underground outside into a panel on the side of the garage, then up to here. And then okay. it distributes from here. So if he goes with satellite or cable TV, um, distributes from here to each one of the rooms. Okay. Sounds good. Is, that, is that high speed internet too? Yes. Right. RG6 uh, is mainly for cable and satellite and CAT6 would be for your return lines for ordering as well as your... Uh, Table data for high-speed internet off of CenturyLink or any of the other. Awesome. There's also one here in the master that's uh, down low. So again, you have the uh, blue line, which is the uh, the upgrade of the old phone lines, which were Cat Five. These are Cat Six, and then you have the coax cable, which is the RG Six uh, for cable TV. Just remember, this wall is non-bearing. So later, if you don't put furniture here, you can always just knock a little hole in the wall above the box drop the cords down to plug it down low so you can bolt your TV up and not have to see the cords. Perfect. Monster bedroom again, 4, 8, 12. Looks like you got about 16 feet wide in here by 16 feet the other way. Head of the bed will be right over here. One of these plugs next to the bed will turn on from one of the switches for a lamp. The other two switches will be for the ceiling fan free wire that's standard in each one of the bedrooms. Your main air conditioning, as you can see, we run them very nice. Strap them up every two to four feet. Right above your head is actually an attic access platform that has a hole in the laundry room. You can get up in the laundry room right there and get to all the AC units and you can sit up there and do maintenance on them, clean them. You have uh, power up there. You have a, a light switch and a light up there also. Two awesome. Years. There's your view on a beautiful day that's almost clear, but a little windy. <laughs> You've got a good shot of the mountains for probably quite a while. How long until do you think they build some, uh, oh, I think this slowly, is commercial, right? They're slowly making their way down here with the houses and slowly coming up. Uh, mainly what I find over here is uh, leftover beds and couches, but uh, I haven't seen uh. much construction. Um, and there's always a little bit of wind here because you're basically coming out of that corner of the world and there's always seems to be about a five mile an hour wind coming down this street as well as the front street. I notice when I'm in Sky Canyon or over here in North Las Vegas, there's always a little bit more wind compared roll, to the rest, right? right down the freeway, right down to here, yeah. Yeah, well, makes sense. So I think it'll be great when whatever does go there because it'll probably block just a little bit more wind. True. So as far as uh, that's the HVAC you said, right? Yes. Up there. Uh, you have two units. Yes. 
Uh, is there is there a reason why you have the two units, one for one floor and one for the other one? Uh, it's pretty much all just due to uh, square footage size. So okay. uh, so many tons will hold so many square feet. Mm -hmm. Our smallest plan, which is like 23, 2200, uh, only needs one unit. Mm -hmm. It has a split system for upstairs and downstairs. Uh, this one being the more square footage. Uh, it's got a, I believe, a five ton and a three ton, two separate units to, again, to handle the, basically the downstairs and the upstairs. Makes sense. Um, and then blend it in. Uh, to work, especially with that big open air coming in through the front door. Uh, you normally have a thermostat right outside. Uh, in the model, it's actually right outside the door of the entry, but we put it a little mm -hmm. further down the hallway so that the people in the bedrooms will be a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So one thermostat up here in the hall, one thermostat downstairs. That's what I was going to ask you next. Two yeah. separate thermostats. When you come in through the two by six wall to the grand master bathroom, the third reason you bought the house, you got the nice deep long tub shower combo with the rain glass behind it so that people aren't staring at you from the freeway. Got a light above the tub, light above the shower, exhaust vent in the middle of the room. Again, no radiant barrier on the sealer, ceiling, even if the vents are pookied and booed up around the, the sheathing to make sure they don't leak at all. As we've gone around the house, you might've noticed all the pink foam, orange foam, all trying to the tops of the walls, the bottoms of the walls, any little holes we might've had in the lath from nails, they put extra goo on them to seal them up to make sure everything's covered. And we have a third party inspector that comes and checks all that also. Awesome. So uh, does that have to do anything with the fact that, um, you know, how insulated the house is and all that stuff, right? Absolutely. How tight the house actually is on leakage. Um, the houses are so tight on leakage now Mm -hmm. We're actually, why we're putting in those jump fence to go from the bedrooms to the hallways. Mm -hmm. There's a jump vent in the vaster sitting off in the corner. It looks like a big air conditioning vent, but it's just a hole that goes from there over the stairs. Right. So that when you're in here and you have your door shut, you're circulating that air through the house because mm -hmm. there's not as much uh, leakage air coming in from the outside. You need to blend it with your fans and your uh, air conditioning at home. Now, how does... Um because KB Home brags that they're, you know, the best uh, builders when it comes to energy efficient and how sealed tight their homes are. How do you guys compare com to them? Everybody has a program. Um, there's a minimum requirement that's uh, pretty stringent. Mm -hmm. um, different people come across it doing different things. We usually use the radiant barrier rather mm -hmm. than more insulation down low. We like to keep the radiant barrier to get the heat out of the attic before right. it ever gets in your house. Mm -hmm. And that way your R30 insulation is going to make your house more comfortable because it's not even keeping out as much heat. Right. Um, the, some of the people will do foam in the walls rather than a bad insulation because it's a little bit more sealed. But again, when we seal the bottoms, as you can see uh, with, with glue, so there's a seal under the wall, then there's a seal from the plate to the plywood. Um, then you have the seals at the top, which is completely foamed. And then you have the seal on every little spot that could possibly come through with the super glue and that stuff. If you get it on your hands, <laughs> you'll never get it off without the right <laughs> chemical. Um, yeah. And then again, the air conditioning ducts, they're, they're real, literally, this looks like about a two foot round duct. When if you actually look right here, it's about 10 inches around. And that's because there's two to three inches of insulation all the way around that duct to nice. keep those ducts insulated up in the attic as well. Then you'll have a complete R30 blown in around all the attic in the, in the attic space. Right. And then all your walls, at least that are two by four, are R13, plus the foam that's about an inch thick, plus three eighths of stucco and paint. Right. Um, you'll have some walls like coming up the stairs that are two by six walls. Mm -hmm. um, those walls will be completely full of insulation. The wall all the way across the front of the uh, downstairs bedroom and the loft is two by six. So that'll all be R R19. Uh, right over there in that section. See how the two by sixes on the stairwell. Yeah. So we have a lot of spots that are extra thick with extra insulation, and then with the so if, windows. So if you have a two by six wall, you have to put more insulation. Exactly. In there? Okay. You fill the whole cavity so there's not a void. So a two by four is an R13. Two by six is an R16. R19. So so some uh, like for example, some buyers want to upgrade to let's say an R from an R13 to an R15 in the exterior walls, and maybe from an R30 to an R38 in the in the ceiling attic. How much do you think that adds in uh, insulation? Like every R value is worth something, but you get to a point to where um, if you have a two by four wall and your your normal R thirteen will fill will fill that void. Um, once you change it to a different product to make the same three and a half inches uh, two R value larger, it's still only a certain amount of space from the stucco to the inside of the house. Right. Um, you can only build that so solid to where it's really only going to make a difference when it's uh, 125 degrees outside on that wall for five hours during the day of whether they don't get a degree or two warmer inside sense. the house. Makes sense. So probably not worth the money. 
Um, no, I wouldn't think so. You know, uh, uh, people back in the days used to try to do their houses out of two by sixes all the way around just to get the R19, and that's even really gone out of the way. Yeah. Um, with the with the low E windows, the vinyl frames, and the the foam stucco. Um, it's really, really more than tight enough. And uh, even doing, situation. you know, taking care of all these details, you know, the little holes that you guys are patching, all that stuff, that probably makes more of a difference compared that's to... That's exactly what makes the difference. The actual loss, the leakage. The leakage um, we yeah. have a third party that actually comes in at the end when we, when we say mm -hmm. we're ready for a final inspection, and they put a huge blower door over the front door of the garage door, and they seal everything up. They use a monster fan to uh, vacuum the whole house out. And then they have an actual meter that'll read how much is actually uh, leaking in the home. And they're only allowed a certain amount of CFM of leakage uh, to pass the test. Um, and we've never really failed on any of those. Um, and if we have failed, it was something that somebody forgot to hook up. <laughs> we added something very easy to find. Right. Um, and like I said, it's, it's actually now with these vents that we're putting in, a lot of times you remember if you ever upgraded your carpet and you go to shut your door in your house, that was the only airflow under, was under the door. Right. The room would get stuffy or mm -hmm. it would get too cold. So now we put these big vents in so that when your door is shut, when the AC or the heater turns on, it's just going to go from there to there, but it's still going to circulate and get pulled into the hallway and cleaned. So right. especially at times like right now with COVID, you're sitting in your room and you're sick. You don't want to sit in here for a week and a half breathing your own sickness. Mm -hmm. This way it's going to go back up through the ceiling, back over the filter and get cleaned before it runs through your home. Makes sense. Awesome. You notice it, it gets harder and harder in the newer homes when it's windy outside and you go to shut your door behind you. Mm -hmm. The door just doesn't slam shut and displace the air as easy. Sometimes oh, yeah. it'll close, and but it, it won't actually close because the houses are so mm -hmm. tight it can't disperse the air. Then the AC comes on. Exactly. And <laughs> slams and the doors. Totally the neighborhood. Totally <laughs> the neighborhood. So we saw the uh, his and hers vanities. They each have a plug. They each have a light. Um, got the linen closet in the bathroom. Huge toilet room in the bathroom with an openable window and an exhaust vent or fart fan, whatever you want to call it. And then the monster closet. So again, if you just look at lumber wise, these are normal bays. 16 inches, 16 inches, 16 inches, and we added three. 16, added another one, 16. So four or five extra studs in that wall. This is a sheer wall, so they're a little tighter there, there. Two studs here, two studs in the corners. So just a lot of lumber. Again, quality control with the orange, the blue, all over the house. And a lot of people later they, they do a remodel and they go why is there cardboard in my house well this <laughs> one stud bows in so right. we put cardboard on this side to keep it straight and on this side we got to shave it off a little bit people think well you shouldn't shave the wood down well that's why we make sure we have extra lumber in each one of the walls so we can do that we'll have now that it's all closed we've all been through it once the pink is mine the blue was a different crew the orange was the framing foreman uh, and now all we're doing is waiting today and tomorrow to do a, uh, that's why the, there's tub water in the tubs. We're doing water tests to make sure nothing leaks in the house. It'll sit in the tubs for a couple of days. Uh, we're going to bring an inspector through late today and tomorrow, looking at the electrical, mechanical, plumbing, all that fun stuff. Insulated uh, Wednesday, get an inspection mm -hmm. Thursday, start sheetrocking either right before the weekend or right after. Nice. So at the end of next week, it should be drywalled inside and it should be brown coated on the outside and actually look like a house so by the time we let's say once we finish this right once they start putting up the sheetrock you know inside and um how how much uh, time frame what are you expecting we're about halfway through we're about halfway through on an on an 80 day build so that's about a 40 working day a little over two months right and that's to finish the house without flooring okay uh, then we simply gotta with the way things are going lately um i just had they just got had a call i need a uh, splash tile in two weeks but it's out of stock they can't find it so they have to reselect it can i wait a month oh no i can't wait a month i need it in two weeks um same thing with the flooring some of the flooring people have picked really early they're they're ready to go and suddenly that certain color isn't available anymore right now it's got stuck on a ship for two weeks and, and <laughs> never made it here um the funniest thing so well the toilet paper holders black toilet paper holders just didn't show up for three weeks. Wow. So we're having a lot of little weird quirks that nobody knows about. Roof paper, paint. We can't get paint right now. Um, there's a chemical, <laughs> can't get paint. There's a chemical in paint that uh, that they stopped making for like three weeks and nobody knew about it until the paint stopped showing up at the paint stores, which means it stopped showing up at our job. Uh, I have two houses of exteriors I'm ready to paint and I can't get 100 gallons of paint to paint them complete. Wow. Um, so, you know, it'll take another day or two here, another day or two there. The guys will have to work weekends to make it up a little bit, but 
Well, it. Overall, though, let's say the expected, uh, let's say this is probably like 40 days out to, for you guys to finish this one, is what you're saying? Construction-wise. Uh, Construction-wise, construction yeah. Mm -hmm. So before flooring. So probably 50 days, maybe, something like that. Working, working days. Including, including, you know, the... What's it called? The Art surface, carpet, tile, Art surface, prepping it, stuff. final touch-ups. Maybe there's some kind when of delay or something. When I say final touch-ups, we, we, we leave a couple days at the end after carpet mm -hmm. to just re-tap, touch up all mm -hmm. of the cabinets, all of the handrails, all of the flooring, all of the grout, uh, especially with the, the wind that we get here and the heat and cold, you get a lot of little cracking in the grout, little cracking in the drywall or the paint. So we go through it really, really good when we time to control it and turn the air conditioning and heater on. To, to let it settle um, so that we get as much of the house to settle that we can make as many you know, adjustments to before the home buyer ever moves in. Makes sense. Hallway or here, we'll have the thermostat. Like I said, it's a little different than the model. We originally was by the front door. We found it was turning off a little bit too early for some of the kids that were sleeping down at the end of the hallway. So we moved right. a little further down the hallway. <laughs> down here, green return air above your head that actually sucks air. Smoke detectors that say fire, fire, carbon monoxide warning. In the hallways, each of the bedrooms have their own smoke detectors that are followed up with a, a battery backups. And then again, this is your air conditioning vent that's going to ventilate the room and go out the door. This is just a jump vent that's a hole from here to the hallway, so when the door is shut, it will still circulate the air in each one of these rooms. And again, ceiling fan pre-wire, radiant barrier on the low roof, as well as the higher roof that goes above it. Triple girder right here holding the roof up with steel straps and steel. All of our uh, engineering comes from California, so we're, we're kind of a little overdone uh, as far as uh, uh, earthquakes. For earthquakes, sorry. Kind of uh, and also more lumber, as you can see over here, there's a, a 4x8 holding up these three trusses above us here in the middle of that room. 4x4s above all one of the windows, 4x6s on this side. So just a lot of material. This is all the good stuff you don't get to see later when you're trying to find this picture to put a nail. <laughs> Now you know there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, lumber there to, to, to hit. You just gotta find it. This room's a little bit more square. This is one of the only sliding windows you have in a house. 4040 slider instead of the single hungs, but it's still low E. And again, like you said before, you can see the difference of the clarity with the light uh, light tint that the uh, low E creates. Um, just remember, at night when the lights are on, you're a fish in a fishbowl. Oh yeah. They're not, they're not tinted at all. Got a bigger closet in this room, but again, ceiling fan pre-wire, your main air conditioning right above towards the window to draw this all back to the hallway, and a jump duct that just goes from here to the hallway. Ceiling fan pre-wire with two, with two switches, and a regular switch, which will be for that plug right under the window in case you want to plug the ramp in. Okay. Last but not least is the Jack and Jill bathroom. So you have two hot and cold waters and drains, a plug on each side. You've got extra backing to screw the towel rods into so you can make sure that you won't pull them off the wall. Light above each one of those sinks. Air conditioning in here, air conditioning in here. And again, tubs are full of water. We're going to leave them full of water for probably another two or three days to make sure that nothing leaks and that all the pipes all the way through the roof are holding water and don't have any nails through or anything. You've got a light above the tub. One of the other things we do is we put our manifolds above the tub. So if they ever need to find where to add water later, they can find these manifolds. Um, if they ever need to change the manifolds, they always know the manifold are over a tub or shower. Um, and if they were ever to drip or leak, they would drip into a shower rather than anywhere else in your house. Nice. Lots of small details. <laughs> That's basically the process of the walk today is to smell this stuff, to know what's behind your walls before it gets covered up. Especially now that you've seen some of it on video, you can see just what it takes to block that whole ceiling <laughs> with locks so right. that we can get all the drywall to run the same way and not have a change of direction to where it'll want to move or crack or look different. These trusses go this way, so we've locked all the mm -hmm. way across, all the way through to make the drywall all run the same way. Just a ton of lumber in the ceiling, a lot of steel holding everything together, holding it up, holding it down. Nice. And this has got a big open feel to it up here. Mm -hmm. Any other questions you might have? No, anything else? Let's see, no. upstairs, we talked about the downstairs, the options, we talked about the uh, the white paint, standard knockdown texture, the laundry sink. Mm -hmm. Looked at the laundry sink up here, the pony walls up here, the extra lights in the loft, the plasma pre plumb in the loft. Um, got the laundry sink that was right there. There was the uh, great room pre, uh, pre plumb downstairs. There's the pre plumb in the loft here. Then you have the extra uh, cable at the bedroom. And that, in a nutshell, is the home. Thank you so much, Monty. Appreciate it.